there are a few tank designs that just look sort of odd. For example, the French AMX-13. That's because the AMX-13 uses what is known as an oscillating turret. The turret itself is split into two parts, one for rotation and one for elevation. In this video, I'll walk you through the design, how it works, the advantages, the disadvantages, and the fatal flaw that meant that this type of turret has no real place on the modern battlefield. Conventional tank turrets work as follows. The turret is mounted on a turret ring, which is set into the hull of the vehicle. The turret can rotate 360 degrees in this ring. The gun is mounted onto the front of the turret in such a way that it can pivot up and down, rotating around the mounting point. This means that the gun can be pointed in any direction by rotating the turret and can be elevated or depressed in order to aim at something above or below the tank. This has been a system used on the vast majority of armoured fighting vehicles, from the FT-17 to the M1 Abrams. An oscillating turret achieves rotation and elevation in a very different way. Firstly, the turret itself is split into two parts. The lower turret, sometimes called the collar, works the same as a conventional one. It engages with the turret ring and can spin 360 degrees, providing the rotation. The upper turret contains the entire gun and, importantly, the gun is fixed to this upper turret and cannot elevate or depress on its own. Instead, in the gun, the entire upper turret pivots up and down, rotating around trunnions set into the lower turret. But this seems quite complicated, right? Right. But it does have some pretty huge advantages. Firstly, it means the turret ring can be smaller. You have to remember that the visible gun poking out of the tank is only part of the assembly. Inside the turret, you have the large blocky gun breech that the loader puts the shells into. So when the gun is elevated, i.e. pointing up, the breech drops down, and in a conventional turret, the turret ring has to be large enough to allow the breech to drop through it. On an oscillating turret, this is no issue. When the upper turret pivots to elevate the gun, the pivot point is much farther back, meaning the breech drops a smaller distance, and so you can get away with a smaller turret ring, and by extension, a smaller turret. The turret ring diameter is also a huge driver in how wide a vehicle has to be, so using an oscillating turret means you can mount a big gun on a small tank, as is the case with the AMX-13. When a conventional turret aims upward, or elevates the gun, the breech sinks down into the turret ring. If the gunner aims down, or depresses the gun, the breech rises, and the gun depression of the vehicle is usually limited by how far the breech can rise before it hits the roof of the turret. Gun depression is an incredibly important feature, as vehicles with more gun depression can expose a lot less of their tank when shooting over hills and other terrain. Again, by mounting the gun rigid inside the upper turret, oscillating turret vehicles don't have this issue, and usually have quite good gun depression as a result, limited more by physical features such as the shape of the lower part of the turret, or the gun hitting the hull of the tank itself. In terms of gun depression and elevation though, these vehicles do have a disadvantage. The breech may not hit the turret ring, but the rear of the turret itself can hit the engine deck when elevating the gun. You can see this clearly on the AMX-13. The gun can't actually elevate all that much because the turret bustle would strike the rear of the hull. To combat this and maximise elevation and depression, oscillating turrets try to mount the gun as high as possible in the upper turret. This comes with its own pros and cons. It means the vehicle can peek over obstacles and expose very little of the turret, but it means oscillating turrets tend to be quite tall, like you can see in the AMX-50. The other major advantage of the oscillating turret design concerns loading the gun. The loader is inside this upper turret, and so he is moving along with the gun, meaning the breech is in the same relative position to him at all times. But the real kicker is when you want to fit your vehicle with an autoloader. The autoloader is a device that automatically takes rounds from the ammunition stowage and rams them into the gun breech. And this works fine in conventional turrets, as long as the gun is completely level at 0 degrees elevation, or what is known as the index position. But when the gun is elevated away from this index position, the autoloader can struggle. Conventional turrets can solve this in two ways. Either use a more complex autoloader that can load the gun at any elevation, or simply bring the gun back down to the index position between every shot. The first option is expensive, and the second isn't ideal. Aiming your gun away from your target after firing is a huge disadvantage for obvious reasons. An oscillating turret provides a neat solution, as the autoloader mounted in the upper turret will be in line with the breech at all times. So, a vehicle with an oscillating turret and an autoloader can be small, fast, and pack a big punch. But there is a catch. Splitting the turret into two, as we discussed, comes with a lot of advantages, but there is one major disadvantage. There's a gap between these two parts. This means that vehicles with oscillating turrets are almost impossible to seal against the elements, against water, and critically, against NBC threats. NBC stands for Nuclear, Biological, Chemical, 
and almost every tank today is fully protected against these threats through excellent sealing and state-of-the-art air conditioning and filtration systems. Oscillating turrets just cannot be sealed to the same level, as some sort of gap is required between these pivoting parts for them to actually function properly. This means that if subjected to a gas attack or exposed to nuclear fallout, the vehicle's crews would be incredibly vulnerable. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your vehicle is if your entire crew is incapacitated. The oscillating turret had its golden age in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Spearheaded by French designs like the AMX-13, Panhard EBR and AMX-50, many countries created their own oscillating turret vehicles, with few actually entering service. However, an oscillating turret vehicle did enter service with the US Army in 2007, the M1128 Striker Mobile Gun System, or MGS. The MGS features an unmanned, 105mm armed, oscillating turret with its own autoloader. In theory, this design would have all the benefits of an oscillating turret, with none of the drawbacks, as all of the crew is in the fully NPC protected hull. In this case, it was not to be. The vehicle's autoloader had a large number of issues, and the entire system was just too expensive to be worth it. So, while oscillating turrets may not be cutting edge or even that relevant anymore, it was an interesting idea that certainly had its advantages at the time, and the look of those 60s and 70s oscillators is just so iconic and so space age. If you have an idea for what I should explain next, please do leave it down in the comments or feel free to put it in the discord. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you want to see some more, do consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.